Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to build your own web scraper, get your own web scraper, or that are looking to learn more about what they are and how they work, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering all of that in today's video and you will not need to know how to code at all. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so we're going to be running these in two platforms. One is replit.com, which is an IDE based on the internet. And basically, it's just your typical website where you can enter in your code. I know I said code, but you will not need to know how to code. So IDE is an integrated development environment. Basically, it's an application that allows you to develop software a little bit more efficiently. So we'll be using Visual Studio Code and replit.com, both of which are free. And basically, this is where we're running the code. Now I'm going to be scraping my website and what I'm going to say here, this is a quick disclaimer. Make sure that you're following any and all applicable laws, rules, regulations, and guidelines when doing this. Not every website permits you to scrape them for data. And you also have to worry about the data handling policies and regulations and things of that nature. So this video is for educational purposes only. Make sure that whatever you're doing when it comes to web scraping and all of the different practices, make sure that you're doing only what you're allowed to do legally and ethically and morally. So let's just jump straight in. We're going to be using ChatGPT. I originally didn't want to make a bunch of AI related videos because although I know it will create some jobs, I'm worried that it's also going to get rid of a lot, but I also think that people need to understand how it works. So we're gonna use this to build this app and it'll be very, very quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask it to scrape a website. So what a web scraper is doing is basically finding specific information on websites and then reporting it back to us. So we're gonna start out with something simple. So we'll say, write me a Python app that scrapes a URL a user specifies. The reason I'm saying this is I don't want it to be hard coded into the app so that every time you run it, it just automatically scrapes a website. I wanna be able to tell it what website to scrape. So we'll say that scrapes a URL a user specifies for all h2 content and saves this as a csv so h2 is a heading type so you'll see we have heading one heading two heading three so we'll specify this here and see what chat gp will do so you'll see it starts writing everything for us and then it'll save it as a file here. So you don't need to know how to code, but it says you will need to have beautiful soup and um, requests installed. I already have that installed, but it'll basically walk through what you need to do. So we're gonna copy this code and put it directly into Replit. We're not making any changes to it whatsoever, and we're gonna click Run and just see what happens. So it says enter URL to scrape. So in this case, I want to enter in our test website and we will paste this URL in. I may not grab it, so we'll just type it in. And then we'll hit enter. You'll see it says it's been scraped and saved. So at this point, you're going to need to find that file. So in Replit, you have a couple of options. So you have a variety of different resources. So you have your account and a couple of other options, but you should see the files content over here. So there's this little sidebar. And if we click right here, you'll see we have H2 content heading to. It's pretty simple. That was the only H2 content. So what we'll do is if you want to try to digest this a little bit more, you can find, uh, you can change H2 to H3, but there's quite a few different areas to do this. So instead, since we already have this running and we know that it works, we're going to test it in Visual Studio Code as well. So we have a blank Python file or app. So what we'll do here is we will copy the code over. 
So we're going to click copy code and we'll paste it in and then we'll click run. And then it'll say enter URL to scrape. So we will type in the same exact thing. And then we'll type in test two. And then you'll see it says that the file has been saved. So this one saves it to my users folder. So I'll open it and you'll see we have heading two right here. Now that is also the actual text that's being presented. So you may be thinking, okay, well, we how do we know it's actually working? What if it's just finding the text that says heading two? So what we'll do is we will say that worked rewrite this to find any text that is a price and see if it understands what we're saying. And you'll see here that it's representing a price, but you need to make sure when it comes to prices and things like this that you're paying attention to formatting. For example, what if it doesn't have a decimal place or what dollar amount or currency, etc. So we're going to copy this because we know we have $100 and $200 listed on the website. So now we will paste this in and we'll click run. And because we told it to rewrite, it already knows. Okay, just type in the URL. So we will type in HTTPS semicolon slash slash www.codelessfix.com slash test two, and I will be taking this website down. Um, so it's not going to be available longer term, but you'll see we have the text argument is depreciated use string instead. So here's a great option to show how to essentially figure out different issues when you don't need to know how to code, but you are using chat GPT. You can copy this error and say and also just make sure you're reading this because it does explain complying with terms for websites. So what we're going to do is we're going to say I get the following error in Replit. And then you can paste in the error. And then you'll see that it's going to rewrite it. And so now we're going to click copy code and we will paste it over the top and click run and now it says enter the url to scrape so we'll do the same thing and hit enter and you'll see it says prices have been extracted and now we have this prices file that wasn't there previously and it shows 100 and 200. So now we're going to test this exact same code over here in Visual Studio. So we'll paste it in and click run. And you'll see that it's been saved. And it actually shows you um, this is the location for the Python file. So usually the default location will be in the user's directory. So when you're scrolling through, you should be able to basically just search for the actual file itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the URL. And you'll see they have been scraped. So now we're going to go to that same directory and see if we can find a prices file, which you'll see was just created. And we have 100 and 200 here. So as you can see, we were able to make this fairly easily and quickly. So what I'm going to do is I will include, um, I'm actually not going to put the web scraping portion specifically on codelessfix.com just because of some of the issues that can come up when it comes to people using these incorrectly. So this video is going to be more of a for informational and educational purposes only. I don't want to share the code just because if it's misused in any way. But those are two use cases. So the idea here is if there's specific content on a page, for example, if you want to find out what the content is, you can right click and click inspect. And you can click on the different items and look over here and you'll find out, okay, this is the content, like this is the text. You can find the style classes. So you'll see we have H1 right here. And then you'll see paragraph. Um, so you can kind of hover over each to figure out 
the different types or information that you're looking for. So if you're looking for images, for example, you can try to scroll through and find the actual image. Uh, there's quite a few different options that you have. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I will see you all in the next video.